Welcome to Better System Trader, the podcast to help systematic traders of all levels improve their trading. We'll give you loads of expert tips and practical advice on system design and validation, money management, trading psychology, and many other topics. Whether you're just starting out or a savvy systematic trader, we're here to help you improve your trading and find more success. This is Better System Trader with your host, Andrew Swanscott. Hi, it's Andrew Swanscott here and welcome to this week's Trading Thought. In the previous podcast episode, which was um, episode 76 with Larry Tentarelli, we opened up the opportunity to submit questions for Larry and we received quite a few pages of questions. Now, surprisingly, a large portion of those questions were about exits. And I actually asked Larry why he thought exits was such a hot topic and he, he suggested that perhaps exits are an area that people really struggle with, which got me thinking about exits more and um, I record an interesting point that Murray Ruggiero made back in episode 42. Now, I think um, the the concept that Murray raised is, um, you know, something that maybe uh, traders may not even consider when they're looking at exits and and specifically how to choose the best type of exit for your strategy, which we'll get to in just a sec. Uh, but Larry was kind enough to share his philosophy behind exits. But you may have actually noticed that he didn't really give exact details about the exits, which I think was intentional because it's um, it's something that re- that traders really need to figure out for themselves. So then how do you go about choosing the best type of exits for a strategy? Well, let's take a listen to Murray answering a question from a listener about the impacts of exits on strategy performance. Okay, thanks, uh, Murray. So I just might um, switch over to exits now. We've got a question from Daniel, just basically wondering the impact that exits can have on strategy performance. So uh, what do you say about that? Well, it's actually an area that most people haven't looked at. The whole concept of exits is is one of the least um, researched topics. And it is a pretty important topic. Now, here's what the problem is. Exits need to be paired with certain entries. So you can't have the book of exits because if you had the book of exits, um, you'd also have to discuss for each exit, what type of entry does that exit pair with best? I mean, I'll give you an example. Let's suppose the entry method was a counter trend system. So you did something like, um, you know, Connor's RSI system where you're selling, you know, where you're buying when the RSI hits a three day low. You know, or, or a 7-7 seven, seven system, you hit the seven-day low, you buy. Well, if you had a stop below the market, you could see that that stop, even if you develop some smart stop below the market that, that looked at some support levels or whatever, might not perform well with that counter trend strategy hmm. because it would get stopped out too soon. On the other hand, it might work very well with a trend-following strategy because you had enough room above the stop level for the trade to work. So when you look at stops, you have to look at the entry method, how long the entry method is, is predictive, and gauge the stops. So you could create the stop book, but the stop book would also have different stops for different types of entries. Maybe not a Pacific entry, but okay, here's a bunch of stops that work in trend following systems. This is a methodology for counter trend systems. Now, one of the things that people don't realize about stops is let's suppose we have a system and we pair it with a stop method. There are times that getting stopped out of that trade tells you that the market is not functioning in the mode it has to be in for your entries to work. Um, I'll give you, so let's let's go back to the intermarket stuff we talked about. My intermarket divergence method is a counter trend method. So if bonds are going down and utility stocks are going up, we're going to buy. Well, let's suppose I have a stop below the market and I get stopped out. Because that intermarket divergence might still exist, because as long as bonds are selling off, if as long as utility stocks are going up, I still have the divergence, it might want to get me back in the next day. And then I'll get stopped out again. Do you see the problem? Hmm. So there's certain so what I do is I actually have in Trader Studio a function called disable after exit. So I'll take certain stops I've designed that I understand. The mar- that if I get stopped out, my market analysis, my market mode is wrong, 
and I will turn off my entries when certain stops are hit. And that area of research is pretty exciting. Now, the problem is, if you're coding something like this in TradeStation, it's very difficult, and you'd have to write custom code for every single variation. That's kind of why I, I use Trader Studio and built tools that I have in Studio, which, I, of course, I sell, but, but these tools are disabled after exit. So it's now one, one command line of code. So I put, the, I put the exit name, the entry name, and the condition to turn the entry back on. Hmm. And now I can gauge, you know, so, so now when, when a certain stop gets hit, I know that the market's not working for my entries, and I can turn them off for 10 days. I could require the RSI to go back above 50 to tell me that the market has had at least a mild bounce before I try to make a long trade again. So that's the problem. That's why no one's ever done a book of stops because you have to pair it with different types of entries. So the stop book would have chapters where the where you have a generic entry method and then a list of stops and how to use them for those methods. Mm. You couldn't just say that you know good entry good exit methods will work. Good exit methods are only has to have to be paired with an entry method that matches that exit. So Murray makes a couple of interesting points there, but I think one of the main ideas was that exits should match the entry. And when you're looking at the type of exit to use, you may want to consider what the entry is actually doing and you know, how you can come up with a with an exit that can complement that. And I think for a lot of traders, it's common just to try a bunch of our favorite exits and you know, see which ones work. But Murray suggests a more measured approach, which we may want to keep in mind the next time we're looking at exits. So I hope you found some uh, value in uh, what Murray has shared with us and I'll catch you next week. Enjoy the rest of your week. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Better System Trader podcast. The next step is to head over to bettersystemtrader.com for more expert tips, practical advice, and exclusive content. Catch us next time for even more great ways to improve your trading here on Better System Trader. Better System Trader.